Hello, gore whores and fellow dates, and welcome to our life in horror. My name is Brendan, and today we'll be doing a quick little review on Imaginary. Alice? <sighs> this is a new film that came out this year. Um, I believe it came out this year. I hope. Yep, 2024. Um, I heard a lot of really, I'll get into some non spoilers real quick, but, um, let me get into who stars in it. It is starred by Dewanda Wise, Tom Payne, who I believe is from The Walking Dead. I think he plays Jesus. Um, Tegan Burns with Veronica Falcone. It is directed by Jeff Waldlow. Wadlow? Wald, Wald, Wadlow? <laughs> Jesus. And the uh, and the description goes as follows. From Blumhouse uh, comes a chilling tale of childhood and repressed memories of the past. After Jessica moves back into her childhood home in Louisiana with her family, the reappearance of an imaginary friend from her youth sets in motion a threatening scavenger hunt with Jessica's stepdaughter. Alice, uh, as Jessica's memories begin to surface, aided by cryptic stories from the elderly neighbor, Paid by Betty Buckley uh, about a portal into the spirit world. She realizes that the imaginary friend she left behind is very real and unhappy. She left. Um, uh, non spoiler review here. Um, I actually didn't mind this movie. <laughs> it seems like every year I find this one movie that is like critically panned, and I somewhat actually enjoy it. And I think imaginary is so far the one that I actually kind of like. I like the, uh, it's not, it's not overly all like clever or, you know, like got an epic story. I just kind of enjoyed the watch. I didn't have any complaints really while I was watching it. It's not like the story reinvents the wheel in any way. I don't think the spirit entity also reinvents the wheel in any way. I do kind of enjoy learning, like if this is true about imaginary friends that kids have as ghosts. I enjoyed the lore that was set up in that world. I thought that some of the creature designs were really well done. And of course, um, you get the step stepmother with the stepdaughters alone in the house for some time and they have to bond together to become better. Um, so yeah, like it's, it's okay looking. It's got some generally fairly good, creepy sequences. Um, I wouldn't say the bear that you see on this is overly all intimidating or terrifying, even when it is supposed to be. This bear did not scare me whatsoever. Um, I think this movie actually has a really good opening sequence, which I will get into in the spoilers. So I think I might actually just hop on over to the spoilers. Uh, like I said, I if go into it not expecting much, and you might have a good time with this like I did. Um, but yeah, we'll get into some spoilers here. So I like the opening scene with them. So the stepmother is a child's author and she draws this crazy spider and this haunts her nightmare at the beginning of the movie. And I think this, and it reoccurs within the movie a few times, but I really enjoyed the look of this creature. I was like, damn, that thing looks really good. Why aren't we using more of that? Instead, whenever we get the the actual look of this imaginary friend, it, like his <clears throat> bare bones look is almost ghoulish looking. He's tall, he's thin, he's got blacked out eyes, or he is a giant man eating teddy bear, which I also enjoyed the look of that as well. But I think what the studio failed to do was to bring in some real creativity because this is an imaginary friend. He's probably been in hundreds of millions of childhood friends over the years and you're telling me that he couldn't come up with more than just two different transformations for his body why why just the two um so there's that um i also don't mind the list i thought the list that she had to collect i knew right away that it was going to be some kind of summoning thing i thought she was going to summon the demon to our world but it turns out that she was just opening up the door to this imagined I'm going to say Imagination Land, kind of like in South Park. Oops. Um, and I liked Imagination Land, or the imaginary world of the spirit realm. It was very, 
there's like a painting with a bunch of illusions of stairs going up and other which ways, which I really liked. Again, it would have been cool to see some kind of crazy. Uh, give us some more imagine. Do you studios use your imagination here? The, the movie is called Imaginary for a reason. If you're not going to be overly all creative with the storyline, you got to be creative somewhere. Um, as I said, the guy that plays Jesus in The Walking Dead is also in this movie, and he has highly under utilized as he disappears a third of the way through this movie and you literally never see him again um so that was kind of disappointing for me i think all the acting from everybody is fine um i actually thought the little girl was pretty good too uh, i didn't have any real issues she didn't drive me nuts like so i know what some children can do um if anything the teenage daughter kind of was the weakest link out of this whole cast um and then you get this teenage boy next door or whatever, and she, he was just a one-off sequence pretty much and kind of a waste of time in my opinion. We kind of could have skipped over that. The old lady, though, I really dug, and I have I think she's from um, The Happening. I think she's the old lady at the end of The Happening. I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that. I'm just using my memory noodle here, and that's where I'm getting her from. So I think she is fantastic in this movie. I actually really liked her twist. Um, where she has been listening to this demon this whole time. Well, she devoted her whole life to these imaginary fairies or creatures or whatever you want to call them. And she's written books and everybody's called her crazy. And she finally gets the chance to go into this imagination world. And then she just locks herself up away. And she gives a quite a bit of a little, good little speech there. And, um, yeah, she ends up being eaten by the fucking bear. Um, again, would have been nice to have had a, Bigger, better death for her, maybe. You get two, well, I think one kill in this whole movie, which is the old lady. Uh, and it's nothing spectacular. This is just a standard ghost story for the most part, other than you get to transport to another world. I do like how, um, you, you I, again, this, I, I like the design of the imaginary creatures within, not creatures, but like when, She's going through memory or doing things in her future in the imaginary world. And she thinks she's still in this world. And she figures it out that these people get like these big teddy bear like eyes, you know. So that's really good and creepy. And it looked, it was all practical, in my, I think. So it looked really well done. I think that was a nice little touch. Um, one of the other sequences that seemed to come out of nowhere was this mother um, of the stepchildren, it, she kind of just like randomly pops in halfway through the movie and then she never gets, gets back and there's no resolution there as well. Not that you totally need one. I understand the arc is with these children and accepting Alice to be her stepmother. Um, wait, her name is Alice. Alice in Wonderland. Uh, figured it out. Um so yeah, I actually didn't mind this movie as much as I thought. I know it got a whole lot of hate. Uh, I told, I'm not going to say it doesn't deserve all the hate that it's going to be getting, but I, it still probably be so far in my bottom five for the year, but it's going to be not the not in the bottom three. That's for sure. Um, so so um, if you guys like this movie, let me know down in the comments. If you didn't like it, let me know why. I'd love to have a little debate with you guys. Also, my audio, for some reason, just seemed to kept cutting out for this movie. I don't know if I'm the only one that's having that problem or if this is a reoccurring thing. I tried to look it up, but I never saw. It just seemed to be like every once in a while the audio would just cut out, but the film would still be playing fine. Um, so, yeah, if you have any tips on that, let me know. Um, guys, we are also on Patreon where we put out a bunch of extra content. And thank you so much to our Patreon subscribers. It means the world to us. And you guys are amazing and awesome. And we love chatting with you guys every day. And if you guys could please hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you guys get all the latest updates on what we are putting out. That would be great. Thank you so much. And always remember to stay spooky.